we're gonna walk through some different examples of named accounts. A lot of you have questions about what to name an account and what things should be named. And so this is to, to help you with kind of that labeling process. Revenues, gains, and expenses and losses. Note the distinction between uh, these two. Revenues and gains are not the same thing. Expenses and losses are not the same thing. You need to ask yourself, is this part of the normal business operation? You know, the net difference from all of those is our net income. What's it net of? It's your revenues minus all the expenses and losses. It's revenues and gains minus, it's the net. The net increase of the net decreases, all right? So that's what the net income is. And this is what we reviewed of, of some various accounts, right? Cost of sales is your inventory. Selling, general administrative accounts is, you know, the overhead of running the business, the, you know, the, the higher ups, the executives, that type of thing in their, their office, uh, you know, the accounts receivables department, all these things that, you know, are overhead costs that are not part of the, the core product you sell, uh, but help you run the business. Research and development. Right. This is the money you spend on developing your products. You know, we have down here at the bottom discontinued operations or extraordinary items. If you decide to sell off a line of your business, you'd you'd have those gain and losses from discontinued operations because they're not part of your current operation. So you'd want to have them. And then extraordinary items. This might be a random hurricane that hits, you know, Maine or something like that that you know causes things. Uh, so these are these are the different subtitles and uh, the sub accounts and different amounts uh, that show up on the income statement. So the big secret of accounting in the accounts is saying things slow. Like I said before, if you say it slow, you're going to know. If you say these things really slow and just think about each word and what the word means, you'll get it. Words matter. Okay. Words. That's probably a saying somewhere, right? Words matter. Okay. So it does. The words in accounting matter. A lot of what we're doing right now is definitional and expanding your vocabulary. You've used a lot of these words in the past. I'm not saying that they're new words to you, but you need to understand how they're defined in accounting because what they mean in accounting is very, very specific. What we're going to do is we're going to do that same same thing we did last time with uh, uh, The Rock. Uh, it was really harsh on me. He was really harsh on me. But uh, The Rock, will you be willing to help out again? <laughs> Ooh, you want the people's champion to come back into the ring, do you? Yeah, I. it'd just be really helpful with this, just one thing. We're doing the same thing we did last time uh, in the examples, which where we go through and we try to label the account, except for this time we're labeling them for revenue, expenses, gains, or losses. And I'm going to throw up a couple accounts and you just give me the, the names. Can you smell how bad you are? You look like a homeless Power Ranger. Man. Oh, look, okay, can we just stick to the accounting? All right. Okay, great. Sale of a product. All right. The sale of a product. What is it? Revenue, expense, gain, or loss. People's champion knows. Look, sale of a product. That's easy. Sale of a product. That's going to be revenue. Very good, The Rock. That's right. Rail Revenue. Oh, <laughs> you bet your candy asset. Look, assets aren't involved. I don't know how many times I need to tell you this. So let's go to the next account. Interest received. This is interest you receive. Oh, The Rock knows this one. The Rock knows. This is an expense. Interest. Okay. Uh, the name of the account. It doesn't matter what the name. No, it does matter what the name is. It matters a lot. You keep saying that and it's so wrong. It's so wrong. The name of the accounts matter. Interest received. This is interest you receive. That means that you are the one getting interest. What's that going to be? That's going to be a revenue. It's not an expense. It's a revenue. Are you ready for the next one? Look, in front of millions and millions of The Rock's fans, I'm going to own the rest of these. Okay, great. That's a lot of confidence. All right. Uh, production error. So if you have a production error, what is that? A revenue or an expense? An expense. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it's an expense. And why did you think it's an expense? Well, it's part of production and it's not good. It's an error. It's something The Rock has no familiarity with. That's right. Well, I think you do have some flaws, but look, there's two things you can do about it. Absolutely nothing and like it. So when you have a production error, this is a normal process of production. And so as a result, it, it leaves uh, your production line and it's usually considered an expense. Uh, wage paid to workers. All right. The wages paid to workers. Uh, what's that going to be? So the wages paid to work. That's an expense. That's right. This is the wage that you're going to pay to workers sold equipment. So this is equipment you have sold. All right. So you've sold it. Is that a revenue or an expense or a gain or a loss? Ooh, Sold equipment, that's a gain. You're gaining money. Uh, no, actually, this is a trick question. Step into the ring and pull something like this with the rock. Oh, man, you're looking like a, a bowl of fruity pebbles. All right, so look, I just need to explain this. Can you let me explain this? Um, you sold equipment, and the equipment 
if it, it it would be a probably a gain or a loss, but it depends. Did you sell it for a gain or a loss? Did you get more than it was worth? If you've got more than it was worth, then it's going to be a gain. If you got less than it's worth, you're going to be a loss. Know your role and sit down. I'm I am sitting down. I'm at I'm at my computer right now. I'm sitting. Equipment is destroyed. All right. So what if your equipment is destroyed? So this is equipment you had and it's like gone from a fire or something like this. This is a loss. That's right. You're right. It is. It's an equipment loss. This is an equipment loss and this is a common thing. The reason why it's not an expense, the reason why it's not an expense is it's not part of your core business. And so we don't label it as an expense. We label it as a loss. That's what we do. We label it as a loss. Let's get into swimming pool accounting and talking about uh, different things that might happen. Let's say you have a mudslide. A mudslide happens to a pool you're manufacturing. Uh, is that a, a gain, loss, revenue, expense? Well, a mudslide is going to get into this rebar. One of the great memories I have with my dad is uh, it was a heavy rain in San Diego and we had to go to the bottom of this clay pool and we had to take it all out by hand. And it was funny because my dad probably could have hired somebody to do it, but he did it with me to kind of like build a relationship and build kind of like a bond. Um, at least that's what I think. I, I, I yeah, that's what it was. So I, 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 so we were there and it was a hot, sweaty day. We just emptied these buckets of clay out from the pool. And it was just a long day of just me and my dad just emptying buckets of clay out uh, uh, from the rebar. And you had to get your hands in there and then pile it. It's just crazy. So um, is this a gain, loss, revenue, expense? This most likely would be an expense. Rain happens. It's a regular thing. You know, California did have a drought, but it's still a regular thing. So this would be an expense. What if it was like a hurricane that did something? Well, you might call a hurricane uh, some sort of loss, unless, of course, you're in Florida where they get hurricanes like every year. So uh, it, it it all depends. This uh, would be something that would be most likely an expense. Let's go to Monsieur Heisenberg uh, for some examples, all right? So you sell your drug inventory to Tuco Salamanca. Tuco Salamanca uh, is uh, our, the distributor, uh, you know, and he's like a crazy guy in the show, all right? So any cash you received is gonna be revenue an inventory that you gave him, so this is the bag of like the crystal or meth or whatever it is, the inventory sold, that's the inventory expense. And we call that cost of goods sold. So inventory sold is the inventory expense, AKA cost of goods sold. And this is a key aspect to notice. Notice the action of the sale is on the income statement, but the resources, where are the resources always? Resources are always on the balance sheet. They're not on the income statement. The income statement tells you and describes what's happening with your resources and changes related to exchanging stuff. But the assets, those resources always are tracked on the balance sheet. So the cash will end up on the balance sheet. The inventory comes off the balance sheet because you're getting rid of it. And how it's represented on the income statement is uh, sales and inventory expense. So uh, we'll talk about how these things balance with journal entries a bit later. Revenue and basic expenses. Remember revenue recognition rules. What's the status of the job? Did we, uh, what's the likelihood of payment? These are the basic things that we need for doing this. There's, there's more deep, there's deeper cuts to this, but that's what we're going to use right now. And expenses are uh, generally things associated with the normal operations of the business, marketing, general administrative expense. That's the overhead expense uh, that you might have with it. Research, the research and development costs, interest expense. The things that you wouldn't count as expenses are like, you know, your equipment uh, uh, that you have gets destroyed in a fire or, uh, you know, you sell it as uh, you sell it for a loss. These are the things that would be a loss or a gain. These Okay, so what are some other examples? Uh, they have an expense in operating their meth lab, uh, hydrofluoric acid, and it's used to... It's used to make human smoothies. It's used to get rid of evidence. So you, you kill someone or you have a weapon you need to destroy, you put it in hydrofluoric acid, and if you put it inside of a plastic bin, it will all dissolve. Uh, this is an example where Jesse Pinkman didn't listen to Walter White and put it inside of a bathtub, and it eroded through the bathtub and made a huge liquefied mess. But it's the way we do, you know, get rid of, uh, you know, this is where how we dispose of things. So what would we call this? What kind of a, you know, what kind of account would this be? Hydrofluoric acid, some of you might think of it as like if we had it or we owned it, you might call it inventory, but it's not that. This is a general administrative expense. This is an expense that you'd have that are part of an overhead of running a business. Hydrofluoric acid is not used in the production of meth. I know, I mean, I don't know what's used in the production of meth, but I know it's not that. That is not used in it. Instead, what this is used for, this is part of the management operations. This is how they get rid of things that they want to get rid of. Um, and it's a very horrible thing. It's a horrible thing, but uh, this is what they do. And so if you were going to do the bookkeeping for Walter White, this hydrofluoric acid that you use, this would be uh, selling general administrative expense. It's an administrative expense. So this is part of your overhead. If you're going to be in this business, you're going to have to get rid of some bodies. 
Uh, and if, you know, as you get rid of those bodies, you got to use this stuff. And so this is, this would be part of the overhead it has nothing to do with your core, core, uh, production, uh, but it's part of the overhead to make sure your operations run smooth. So that's what the hydrofluoric acid, what about the demoed RV? You know, this is a point in the movie where they have to get rid of the RV because it's become evidence, um, and it, they could be prosecuted for having it. Um, and so they take it to a, uh, a place and it gets smashed. Now, that's a loss. That's not part of your core operations. You know, people might think, oh, that's an expense. But, you know, unless this happens every week and you smash an RV every single week, this is not an expense. This is a loss. You had a piece of equipment, but all of a sudden, poof, it's gone. It's a loss. Now, if you sold it, let's say you bought it for 700 bucks and you sold it for 1000 If you sold it, you'd have a gain and the gain would be for 300 bucks. The demoed RV, this is part of your equipment and that gets... Uh, that you have to get rid of and the loss of that equipment would be uh, reported as a loss, not an expense. If you ended up doing this every single week, then it'd probably be an expense. But because it's a one-off type of thing, it's a loss. Tesla Motors, this is their financial statement. So they have automotive sales and development services. Notice they don't have their, you know, zero emission vehicles as a line item. Uh, I think one reason why is because they don't want to call out a lot out to it. Uh, they're not doing anything crooked by not having it here, but it's not there and it probably should be because it is huge. It's, you know, it's, you know, what was it? 2020, it was uh, 2019. It was almost $600 million. That's huge. That's a ton of money and straight profits. There's, there's no expenses with it, but they had just, they list it here and they, they lump it all to that together. So automotive sales and development services uh, get you to total revenues and you have cost of revenues. So these are the costs of the automotive sales. You get to a gross profit right here. You get to a you know co total cost of revenues. You get to a gross profit, just like we showed on the other page. Research and development. This is something really cool. Tesla is a place that is burning a lot of cash on R&D uh, to the tune of 200 to $300 million a year on R&D, which is a lot of money. And then they have selling general administrative expenses, right? Uh, that might include you know, paying legal fees associated with tweets coming out from directors and, uh, and from CEOs. And so selling in general administrative expenses, these are all the overhead stuff, losses from operations, interest income that they might get from something that they, you know, a loan that they have somewhere, interest expense, and then other income. And then you get down to this net, net loss. Instead of net income, they have a net loss because after uh, subtracting all these things, they're losing economic value. That's okay. They're a new company and that's expected and you'll notice that it's it looked like it was, you know, based on last class in our analysis, it looked like it was going down, right? So financial statement matriculation, the net income goes uh, to re statement of retained earnings, retained earnings goes to the balance sheet. The It could also be presented as revenue minus expenses uh, as part of the larger accounting equation. Be familiar with financial statement matriculation when it comes to the income statement.